Um, the first poem I'm going to read you is a sonnet. Actually, the first two poems I'm going to read you is a sonnet. By a contemporary poet that I especially like. Um, it's all the more remarkable since he's younger than me, and generally speaking, people are paranoid about people younger than themselves. Um, called Alice Oswald, who lives down outside Totnes in Devon. And this is a poem of hers called Wedding. From time to time, our love is like a sail. And when the sail begins to alternate from track to track, it's like a swallowtail. And when the swallow flies, it's like a coat. And if the coat is yours, it has a tear, like a wide mouth. And when the mouth begins to draw the wind, it's like a trumpeter. And when the trumpet blows, it blows like millions. And this, my love, when millions come and go beyond the need of us, is like a trick. And when the trick begins, it's like a toe tiptoeing on a rope, which is like luck. And when the luck begins, it's like a wedding, which is like love, which is like everything. Love, sail, swallowtail, coat, tear, ma tear, mouth, wind, trumpet, millions, trick, rope, luck, wedding, love, again, everything. The rush and change of the poem is its own point and makes us think first and foremost about transformations, about the changes that love creates and the changes that art creates as it takes hold of familiar experience, shines it up and passes it back to us as something deeper and refreshed. Refreshed by and for ourselves and also because it comes with a new awareness of living in a context in a tradition, even, of the kind that Eliot meant to summon up in his great essay, Tradition and the Individual Talent, where he spoke about the historical sense, which is a sense of the timeless as well as the temporal, and of the timeless and of the temporal together. Surfing on the back of these changes and connections comes another sensation in the Alice Oswald poem, which is, of course, of exhilaration, deriving not just from the breathless catching of love's breathlessness, though that is very well caught, but from the sonnet seeming to be simultaneously vertiginous and balanced, like the tightrope walker we see in a glimpse. It allows us to hear a note of rapture in the final phrase, which is like everything, even though the sequencing of the poem suggests this ending might be about to feed back into the beginning again, so the poem becomes a kind of miniature self-regenerating vortex, one that sweeps us up and keeps us aloft but blows us about the world as well. 